second one of these is the mid-level fence. Okay, so we've looked at the types of fence. We've had the high capitulating fence. Now we're going to move to the mid-level fence, and that's typically conversational. So that's typically where your hands are somewhere around your torso. And remember the talking points here. If we are doing that fence, we're keeping our hands within the space of our shoulders. We're making sure that we're checking the right hand of your opponent. It's the thing he's most likely to hit you with. It's the hand he's most likely to have a weapon or draw a weapon from. So we kind of keep this subtly in the region of his right hand. And again, we're keeping the flow nice and natural. We're not posturing. We're being nice and nice and natural with it. And we're keeping it in that mid-level space. Okay, so the optimal techniques that I find from the mid-level fence First one, dead easy, it's just the cross. So my left hand is slightly before my right, and we're in this range, and we're talking. And let's say you bump into this hand once, and I'll forgive that, I'll allow that, I will give that some, some pressure back, but that's okay. If it happens again, I need that electric fence effect. I need it that as soon as you touch it again, you're gonna get sparked. So again, for me, the cross is ideal for this. In bar tip two, we tend to cross with a vertical fist, slightly, slightly supinated like so, typically to get into the throat or behind the ear. So we throw it like this and we put our body weight into it a bit more. So we have a bit more of a lunge effect. So in this, if we've got talking hands here, when I do this, I sink my body weight forward. So I bend my front knee, my mass comes into this shot. So not just my arm, my mass comes into that shot. And again, I'm ready to fill that gap with other things. It's just the first blow of what will likely be many needed to put someone out. So from the mid-level, talking hands fence, touch it once, touch it twice. Talking hands fence, talking hands fence, touch it once. You notice that I'm traveling forward with this. I'm not doing an over the top cross. I'm lunging with it and sinking with it. My body weight is actually going down a bit. I'm driving this cross straight up using the vertical fist, throat behind the ear or on the jaw. I drive with it from here. It doesn't matter if, I, if I'm quite close because the, the middle of a fence can be quite close. It can still be somewhat contracted to your body. If you've let it get this close, they're too close. But sometimes that just happens. But even so, even if I'm here, I don't just hit him. I drive with it. Drive into that person. Make sure you bend that front knee. So even if we're quite close, I'm pushing a lot of mass into that person. From here, push the mass into the person with that cross. Really important shot. And again, be ready to fill the gap with other things. This is just the first of your shots. Next one, very easy, is the horizontal elbow. So we're a little bit closer now. I don't need to do the diagonal elbow. That's better suited up here. That's why you see a lot of Thai guys do it, or classic Thai guys, because their hands are up like this. From this position, much easier to do a horizontal elbow. Again, usual rules apply. Make sure you twist your hips with it. Make sure you twist your foot. Make sure you twist your shoulder. All of them should act as one kinetic chain. So from here, again, talking hands, get used to being your favorite Italian, then smash from right to left or left to right. And again, be ready to fill that gap afterwards. Elbows are a fucker for missing. Especially when you're on a duress, they're very short. You forget how short an elbow's range is. And sometimes you can miss. So you've always got to be ready. Let's say I've missed this first one to fill that gap with a pivot blow, a hammer, whatever I need. So if I cock up this first elbow, I'm still covered, but I need to be able to fill that gap with nasty other strikes. But from here, talking range, know your range here. I like this with a bit of a step forward. So if we're talking, my lead leg steps forward a bit as I do that strike. And I like to do something called framing as well. Once I've hit, I kind of keep my arm bent at 90 degrees to stop you closing in on me and allow me to smash out with other things. If I just belt him across the face, bang, I've either knocked him out or I've not. And me fighting back from here is pretty hard. So once I hit, I like to stick with it a bit here. I can still fire more elbows if I want to, but I've also got some strong pushback if I need to hit him or we'll move on to that guy, okay? So that's that, why that horizontal elbow for me also requires a good frame. <coughs> See? Talking hands, talking hands, talking hands. <coughs> I do a little step, 
and I bring my arm across. So talking, talking, talking. My left leg step forward, I elbow solidly, but then I've got this forearm primed to be that wedge here. Talking, 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 and it's ready for the collapse. Ideally, I've sparked him, but if I haven't, I've got this here as surety to keep him a little bit away from me so I can batter him with other things. So that's the horizontal elbow. Very useful from the conversational guard. And then finally, one I like, again, this a bit like the Goshi Ken that you saw in the other video, it's grabbing the face, the web of hand blow here, okay? So from a, a Temi Jitsu. Some people do it like this and hit with the knuckle and the hands here. Some people just literally bang, the web of hand. Both really hurt. This is pretty much always done to the throat, although you can do it under the nose as well. I've seen that done if you're a slightly smaller guy, but using the web of the hand, okay? So from here, I use the web of hand into the throat to lift the chin to fire something else. So conversation here, launch that straight out. Don't even, don't even think about it. Don't even try and aim with it, just launch it. If it grabs him mid head, it knocks his head back. It doesn't matter where it hits him. Grabs him over the mouth, doesn't really matter. Wherever you hit someone with this, eye line, throat, under the nose, it's really horrible and does knock your head back. So again, you launch it like you would a jab, bam! And then you fill the gap. It's the web of hand blow. So we're talking, talking, talking. <coughs> talking, talking, talking. <coughs> talking, talking, talking. <coughs> Most important thing is having the confidence to launch that web of hand blow out. Neck, under nose, eye line, just around the mush, anything will be effective. But bear in mind, this is not an ending strike unto itself. It's a platform to allow you to hit with another technique, to use another strike to fill that gap. Okay.